Hi everyone, my name is Kurt Dusek. I am a solution architect with GitLab, and today I'm gonna to be discussing GitLab basics for developers. As many of you know, GitLab is a DevOps platform that covers the entire software development process. And today we're really gonna be focusing on the create stage. So in this case, we're gonna be going over the advantages of using a merge request based branching strategy. So what you see is a common workflow that all starts with a branch. We begin with the main branch, and that represents your production release or official canonical uh, code repository. And when starting a typical work process, the developer begins with an issue and creates a new feature branch. And that feature branch is gonna contain all of the changes related to this given issue. And for each branch that's created, we'll also create a merge request. And the merge request houses the code changes and all of the automation we wanna run against this change and it gives us visibility into the implications of the change, like what vulnerabilities are being introduced, how the code quality has changed, and how project dependencies may be altered. With all this information being shown in one place, it becomes a natural point of collaboration across product owners, developers, security, or anyone else that has a stake in the code change. Typically, we can start this process by viewing the issue board and selecting an issue that's ready to start work on meaning it has clearly defined requirements and expected outcomes and includes all necessary material like design comps. As a developer, this is where my code begins. I can start working on this issue and in turn deliver the necessary code changes as a merge request. Once the merge request has been created, it serves as a collaboration point around the implementation of the changes. There are several different ways to create a merge request. Each issue has a create merge request button, which creates a merge request, the necessary Git branch, and relates the new merge request back to this issue. Another way to open a merge request is to create a new branch on my local computer and push that branch into my Git repo. GitLab will recognize this new branch, and the next time I visit the GitLab instance, it will prompt me to open a new merge request using my recently pushed branch. Now let's talk about what a merge request is specifically. You'll see here at the top, the description says it closes issue number 16. While it's not required to have a corresponding issue, it helps to have one for traceability and context. Just below the description, we have the Git details. Now a merge request is always associated with a specific Git branch. Like the name suggests, it's a request to merge one branch into another. In this case, I'm merging my feature branch, which contains the changes made to resolve this issue, into the master branch. Now from the right of that, I have the option to use the web IDE, which is a browser-based text editor to make my changes directly in the GitLab app, or I can get the details to check out my branch and work locally on my computer and use a typical git commit push process. This page also tracks my commit history, any CI pipelines that have run against this branch, which we'll get into later, as well as code comments and discussions. GitLab has been ranked by Forrester and Gartner as the best in class source code management tool. So you're not just getting Git, you're getting the best tools to collaborate wrapped around Git. On the left, we see a screenshot of the web IDE. And this is useful for making quick changes directly on the branch without having to pull down and open up your desktop editor. And at the bottom, we're shown any currently running pipelines. On the right are details around how to add your existing files or Git repo into GitLab. These instructions are shown whenever you create a new project and will help you use your desktop environment to run the typical Git commands against this repository. Now let's look at how merge requests actually bring people together and enable collaboration. Beyond the name and references to branches and issues, there are several other useful pieces of information here. At the top, we see the status of the most recent pipeline that was run for this merge request. It's likely each project in GitLab will have a GitLab CI YAML file, which contains a configuration of how automation will be run against this project. GitLab CI is robust and very flexible. It's possible to configure different pipeline jobs to run under different conditions. For example, only within a merge request or only against the master branch. You can even configure certain jobs to run only when a certain file is modified. Next is the approval panel. It's very common to have a workflow where code changes must pass through either an individual or a group of approvers, say for example, software architects or security reviewers. So the approval button acts as a gate in that process, and it's possible to find who is responsible for providing that review and approval. Below that is what's going to drive the approval. This is where the results of different scans that take place within the GitLab CI pipeline will be displayed. So we see here that code quality, security scans, and license compliance all ran within this merge request and have provided their results below. 
It's possible to view each of these reports to see specifically how this change will impact the broader code base. Is this improving code quality or degrading it? Are we introducing any new security or compliance risks? Reports aren't just limited to what you see here. It's very easy to add container scanning, dependency scanning, unit test results, and plenty of other data points and reports to use in the merge request. Merge requests enable collaboration and visibility. It's more than just a Git repository with a CI pipeline attached. If you're working within a large organization with many developers, then code reviews and discussions are part of everyday life. And those tools are built right into the merge request screen. And that provides visibility for anyone involved in this particular effort. And because those are all preserved, it's possible to go back and review past merge requests to get a very clear and traceable picture of the history of a given project. Here we see the history of a given merge request. It includes the comments from users, individual commits to the repo, changes to the status and approval state, and any code review discussion threads that have been opened. And when we're satisfied with the work, we have the merge button, which allows us to push those changes into the selected branch. And when that's completed, the user performing the merge is logged, and in this case, the issue referenced by the merge request was closed. Here we see the completed merge request with scan data, approvals, comments, all preserved. The corresponding issue has been closed, and we can see a post-merge pipeline that has been kicked off. And that may contain additional jobs to prepare this change for a production release. Let's do the lab. 